begin with the breaking news out of Massachusetts, the judge. And the Karen Reed case has denied her motion to dismiss the top two charges. That means that she can, if the Commonwealth wants to, retry her on all three charges, and it sure seems like they're going to want to. Her new trial, scheduled for January, defense attorneys for Reed had attempted to make the case that after her mistrial in July, retrying her on all the charges would constitute double jeopardy. Why? Because four of the jurors came forward, according to the defense, saying that they had unanimously agreed that they were going to vote not guilty on the verdicts of second degree murder and leaving the scene of a fatal accident. But they didn't fill out the form. Prosecutors argued that the defense had the chance to object to the declaration of a mistrial at the time, and they didn't. And that the case does not have a verdict. Judge Beverly Canone sided with the prosecution, releasing her decision today. They had a hearing about it, and during the hearing, the defense had argued, well, Judge, you, you want to talk to the jurors? We can get them to sign an affidavit. We can, we can do a lot of different things to explore this. At the end of the day, the judge decided, no, there was uh, no reason uh, to do this. Here is the Commonwealth's Adam Lally at that hearing urging Judge Canoni to do exactly what she did today in her decision, and that is deny the defense motion to eliminate those top two charges. Certainly, the Commonwealth or anyone wants to uh, try someone who has been acquitted by a jury of their peers or retry them for the same thing. That's not what's happening. There was no verdict returned by this jury. Council had more than an adequate opportunity to address the court in relation to the declaration of this trial. And the court did absolutely nothing wrong in finding manifest necessity as the only alternative uh, that could have been employed in that particular case. Polling the jury then and polling the jury now. It's simply not permitted by the rules, it's not appropriate, and therefore the uh, defense motion should be denied. All right, that was Prosecutor Lally uh, arguing that the motion should be denied. We are getting some reaction from the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office. We believe the judge's decision is consistent with almost 200 years of case law. We are moving forward with trying this case January 27th. Josh Schiffer is with us criminal defense attorney, friend of the program, Friday, boom, every day, yeah, something every day, right? And uh, this was a big, a big one. Your first, your reaction to the judge's ruling here? I, I'm not surprised because it, it really, it's pretty clear from a due process. There was no formal acceptance or polling of this jury to inquire whether there were any charges they agreed with. And that's a giant mistake. I think everybody understands that Judge Canone could have done that a lot better, uh, but she didn't. And you can't go back and put the toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, the octopus has escaped and that jury has been released from all of its obligations. And with no verdict being recorded, the court really doesn't have a choice but to return the charging document back to the DA's office. And the DA's office indicates that they're gonna move forward, which is their absolute right to do. Uh, I expect we might see some more motions practice. This is such a high profile and unique issue. Now that Judge Canone has issued a ruling, that's something people can go appeal off of, and that's what appellate lawyers do. So it might slow down the process some, but right now I'd expect Judge Canone to be bringing this case back for trial uh, there in January, I think the 27th, and everybody's got their marching orders. We'll have to see if it can actually get there though. All right, it's a, I get the, the legal argument here. <clears throat> what about the, <clears throat> the spirit of double jeopardy? If indeed, these jurors did decide amongst themselves, and they and, and if they were polled, if they did sign affidavits saying, "Yeah, no, we all agreed on that. We just didn't realize that we were, we were supposed to fill that out. We thought it was you get them all or you get none." Uh, the spirit of double jeopardy, to me, is not being honored. Um, but yeah. does that matter? And if, what, what, what about the? Isn't there a decision by the Commonwealth too, knowing all of this, on whether to retry her on that top charge? They're going to lose. They, I mean, it was apparently this jury thought the same thing. Everybody watched the trials, like, well, she ain't going to get the second. That, why yeah, would they go no, back? You're, 
you're hitting hitting it right out of the park there, Ted. It's a good Friday. It, it, this case isn't a very strong case for the state. The world watched it. We saw all kinds of stuff, including some pretty indefensible lack of proper police procedure from the state that lots of people would say that fatally injures any criminal liability from the state due to the issues that everybody saw. And that decision whether to use those Commonwealth resources, that's the DA's office and it's their sole and exclusive province. They've got an active charging document returned by a grand jury. So they're gonna go forward on it. Whether they get elected next time, I'm not gonna even try to predict uh, because of the politics up there. But from the court perspective, Judge Canone is on pretty firm ground saying that there was no verdict, so she's limited in what she can do. The appellate court may take a really different view of that. Just because due process sets out this is what's supposed to happen doesn't mean that the appellate courts can't look at the totality of the circumstances, listen to the enumeration of heirs, and construct some sort of ruling or even a new doctrine considering this is such a novel issue where, hey, in these circumstances where we have a jury that appears to have rendered a verdict that was just never taken by the court, this is what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna deal with that. But it's not just gonna be this case. When the courts create a doctrine like that, it lasts in perpetuity because up until the last couple of years, precedent really meant something. And so when you had this process of, oh, if this happens, this is what you do, that would be something to attend to and comply with, but we don't have that yet. It will be an opportunity for the Commonwealth Courts of Appeal to create that if they're willing, but they may also just say, hey, hundreds of years of precedent, uh, they work. So uh, no, no dismissal, go forward and try the case. I, I, but there was really nothing on point with the precedent, and this is a unique case. This could be precedent. It could be Massachusetts versus Karen Reed 20 years from now that people will go back if once it's completely litigated. Because if you think about the process, a jury comes back and says they're hung. There isn't an opportunity to poll individual jurors at that moment. It's not as though the defense can say, well, juror two, what did you think? No, that's not, you can't, they're, they're, te they're expressing something to the court and to everybody that they can't come to a decision. So the assumption is made they can't come to a decision on all, uh, on all of the charges. The judge might have been able to that, that's that, though, the right? that's the point is that you're absolutely right the jury just sits there they're, they're they have to be reactive only they have really limited uh availability other than writing the court and asking the judge stuff they can't reach out to the press they can't ask the different parties anything there's a very strong wall separating people there uh and, and it is a possibility of the courts to do something at that juncture and inquire with the jury hey um this is hung why did it hang? What happened? Where was the uh, conflict? Where could people not agree? And that would be something that happened after the entry of the hung verdict, but that didn't happen. And I'm not gonna get into criticizing Judge Canone uh, because I don't know her well enough to say this is standard in Massachusetts or unstandard, uh, depending on where you're from. I know in my cases, judges, when you've got a broken jury are generally pretty interested in what happened, even if they are limited with what remedies are available. Uh, and, and it gets back to the fact each court it runs, it's got its own personality. And we try to get consistency among the courts through the promulgation of statewide rules and processes. The judges actually go to a lot of training, continuing legal education, just like practicing lawyers do. And I bet that this is gonna be a hot topic in Massachusetts at the next convention. Uh, but right now, Judge Canone was doing the best she could, and if she faces some sort of remedy from the different, uh, you know, Superior Court judges, that's totally separate from this case. In this case, it appears she did the right thing, given the situation she found herself in, even though she could have done more. And, and the ruling makes sense for her. Let a let an appellate court come in and change it for her to have to make that leap at her level. Um, it probably w would be ill-advised. So th this is, both sides knew the loser was gonna take it up, likely. Here's Martin Weinberg, 
the, he was brought in to argue this in front of Judge Canoni. Here um, is his, he, he basically says, bring them in, bring the jurors in, let's find out. Take a listen. Full opportunity for the defense to be heard before the court, read the final note, issued its final order, and a full opportunity for the court to consider the alternatives to the declaration of mistrial. I would say to the to your honor that this is not easy. This was a long trial. The prosecutors have strong evidence that the jury was in fact deadlocked, at fact at an impasse on count two. The prosecutor has strong evidence that in fact the jury was not at an impasse on counts one and three. Bring the jury to the judge here for that. Thank you. It's the right thing to do. That um, you know wasn't done, but the jury was relieved of their service. Uh, it is a, it's a unique legal argument. Um, at the end of the day, Josh, this case seems to be more than most very personal on both sides. It's split a town. It's split the country, and it's also very apparent that both sides are not huge fans of the other, and um, that has created possibly some clouded decision making on the Commonwealth's part in trying or in going back, you know, let's face it, Trooper Proctor kills their murder too. Uh, and and now that he's lost his job, it's a, you know, it's over. But maybe they're not seeing they're human beings too, right? Prosecutors are real people. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> no, they absolutely are. And when you reverse roles with the rest of the people in the state, if you're a state prosecutor out in Worcester or out in Woburn or, you know, out in Fall River, you're angry about this because this is the kind of case that everybody in your community goes, whoa, hey, look what happened over there in Kent, man. Don't let that happen over here in Middlesex County. Don't let that happen over here in one of these other parts of Massachusetts. So they're angry. Then you've got law enforcement. What Trooper Proctor did or rather didn't do, along with some of the other exposures we've seen in this case, I don't know anybody in law enforcement that wants to be an apologist for this kind of behavior, even though they all know it exists. And I believe firmly there's going to be some house cleaning and some tightening up of regulations, of scrutiny, of how law enforcement in Massachusetts cleans its own house, because this is a giant embarrassment. This detracts from the effective role and mission of law enforcement, not just in Massachusetts, but elsewhere. It's like uh, there, there's, a, there's a great old movie uh, about super troopers where they're just making fun of some local officers and all the shenanigans they have. This is so close to that, it's almost funny. And people are angry. Um, that's really a big deal. Yeah, jurors don't like it one bit. Josh, with that, he's frozen in time. I love it. Um, <clears throat> again, the breaking news, Judge Canoni says no to the defense and allows the Commonwealth the option to retry Karen Reed on all charges, including that top charge of murder too. Her trial date is January 27th. We'll see if that actually happens because likely <clears throat> the defense is gonna take this to a higher court. We'll get a break. Back with more right after this.